good morning everyone welcome back to my channel uh, today i'm actually starting a five part vlog series uh, where i'm going to be sharing with you every single day from monday to friday exactly what i get up to in my uh, teaching day working from home uh, so i hope that you find it really useful i personally always think it's so interesting to see you know how people structure their days what specific tasks they've got to do how do they lesson plan how do they get their marking done and i'm hoping that for those of you who are you know thinking about teaching or are currently training to be a teacher or even for those of you who are seasoned teachers i hope that this uh, is interesting to watch and it's also you know mildly entertaining um, and helpful uh, so stick around if you want to see these vlogs uh, let me know down below in the comment section if you find them useful and then I'll keep that in mind to maybe make some more in the future so today is Monday the 1st of February uh, so what better way to kick off February so I thought the first thing that I would do is just quickly share with you guys what I've got planned for the day so let me take you over to my to-do list so I recently uh, just filmed a bullet journal how I plan for the week video so you can check that out um, and actually this is the spread that I filmed. So today is Monday and like I said I've already done my tutor registration. Um, I have a remote lesson with my year 11 class, um, then I have a live lesson with my year 10, a remote lesson with my year 11s and then a live lesson um, period seven so the last day um the last lesson of the day now with the, all of these lessons i've already scheduled them on google classroom that's what i did uh, yesterday and for these two live lessons i've already prepared and i've got all of those resources ready so i don't need to do any prep for my teaching day uh, this morning now at the end of the day we do have a few meetings so um i've just put a little reminder for myself but these are the tasks that I wrote down as important for me to do today. So I've been testing out this um, productivity hack in which you number the tasks in the order of importance and in the order of um, how you want to get them done. So at the end of today, I will be reviewing this and you can sort of see what I've been able to do, um, how long things took me. And I'll also share some uh, behind the scenes throughout the day of uh, any particular things to do with these tasks. So the first couple of uh, tasks that I have to do are things that have rolled over from last week. That's something that I always tend to do is just make sure that the tasks from each week have been completed. So I just have a few forms to fill out a little bit of admin work to do. So I'm going to be doing that because my live lesson is period three, which is at 1040. I have about an hour now, so I'm going to try to get uh, this these first two tasks done within that hour. Um, I then need to make sure that Tuesday's lessons are prepared, so I will spend a couple of hours preparing those, uh, those lessons there for Tuesday, and then I will take a little bit of a break, uh, a break from lesson planning, which will be between, um, you know, ab about lunchtime, so before my uh, period seven lesson, which is at half two, so um, around lunchtime, I will then do a little bit of admin, check my emails, update my tutor call tracker, and then I will spend after lunch, and before that lesson with my year 12s, I will just review a little bit of um, the work that they've done on a methodology project um, and, and leave them some feedback. So that's what I've got to do today. I did mention in the video that I have um, a very sort of um, week that's very heavy on assessments and I've got, a, I've got a lot of marking to do. So one of the key things that I'm going to be focusing on is making sure that I stay on top of my marking. So after that period seven lesson, and if not before, I will start to mark uh, a little bit of the assessments from this year 10 class and that year 11 class as they would have done it in the morning. So it's just really a case of seeing how I get on. It is a very um, task heavy day. So a lot of time spent in front of the computer and making sure that I'm staying on top of things. Um, but it's really important to be ambitious and, and typically on a Monday, I do find that I tend to be very, very productive um, and get lots done so that can uh, build that momentum for the week. So 
right, here's an example of an admin task that I need to do. This is an exam access arrangement form for my SEND uh, department. Um, and I just need to fill out this form for each of my students who are on the SEND register, so special educational needs and disabilities. So in the email, it has a list of those students. I just uh, wrote a list of the ones that I'm currently teaching and I just need to fill out this form for each one of them. Okay, so this is something that I've told my students to do today during their live lessons, but also during the lessons that are not live. This is my teacher dashboard, so I'm able to see how students have performed on each question. This is a quizzing website called Educake. Uh, it does require a subscription, a paid uh, subscription uh, that a, you know your school or your department would get, but I think it's really, really worthwhile and it's so useful to spot trends in the data and to see what questions students find a little bit harder. So you can see here, for example, with question three, I've got 95% of the class who have scored that correct. Whereas question eight, 27% uh, of the class. Um, so I can see just by looking at the color coding and the numbers, uh, what areas the students need to work on. And then I just click on question eight and it pops up what that question is. So then I can start to see what is it that students are finding difficult. I can then also see the total score for each student. And again, it just color codes that. Um, and I think it's just really uh, a great way to uh, you know, give some purposeful feedback, but mostly to inform uh, future planning. Um, so, for example, in my lessons um, with this class, um, you know, later on in the week, I will maybe do a little bit more consolidation or a little bit of another quiz, uh, just so that they can get a bit more practice on the areas that they find trickier. So I just had my live lesson with year 10 and while I was doing that live lesson, I have probably received about 40 to 50 emails. Um, and that's just the nature of juggling classes who are doing the work independently. So most of those emails were private comments left by students. So I have chosen to keep those notifications switched on from Google Classroom, but I know that some of my teacher friends switch off those notifications so that they don't get bombarded with emails. I personally like to see, you know, or get notified if students are leaving private comments so then I can tackle those throughout the day. But one of my top tips as well is just to keep a tab open for each of the lessons that, you know, I have on my teaching timetable. And then I will just scan those every so often just to double check that students haven't asked me any questions or are having troubles with um, the work or logging in or etc. Um, so I keep those tabs open and then I'll just check them throughout the day um, and respond to any queries. Throughout my live lesson as well, I've received a, a little bit more admin to do. So I wanted to share with you guys some of those tasks. A couple of emails were about what groups students need to be placed. So currently bottom set in key stage three, so year nine, um, are, you know, they are choosing what options they're going to be taking for their GCSE. So I have a couple of emails to just give a little bit of advice on whether I think those students are suitable for specific uh, option pathways. Um, and then I've also got a, a couple more emails from students who are currently absent from school or absent from, uh, you know, lessons and they're just justifying or asking when they can catch up with their work. So this is just the nature of um, doing this type of work. Um, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break now and then uh, get on with planning for tomorrow. just wanted to update you on how the day is going so currently having a little snack right now which is really just my breakfast it is 12 o'clock right now um but i've decided to have a late lunch at about two before my lesson with year 12 um and then to focus the next hour and a half or so on uh, getting tomorrow's lessons prepped so just currently planning some lessons for tomorrow and just wanted to give you a quick overview of how I tackle this. So the first thing that I just wanted to um, share is the fact that this class is doing a test during the live lesson, which is the same as this class. So when I scheduled these, 
Um, I already anticipated that I, you know, to, to ease in my workload, this would be the best way to do it. So I just have to reuse that post and schedule it for this class. And it's just going to be the same thing. Okay. Uh, then for this class, this year 11 class and that year 11 class, I've already assigned for them to do the same revision. Now, this is a live lesson. This is not a live lesson. So this lesson is going to be the same as this lesson. So all I need to do is reuse the same post and maybe make a few tweaks because this is a foundation set and that is a higher science set. So I'll make a few quick changes, but it won't take me too long. And then for that live lesson, I'm just going to use the, the work that they've done in today's lesson just to help me plan what I need to focus on in tomorrow. So I'm going to spend some time prepping and planning that lesson. And then this lesson, which is a remote lesson, um, I am going to get them to work through, um, you know, an interactive PowerPoint, but I'm going to film a Loom tutorial explaining this. So I'm just going to look back through the resources I have of this lesson that I've taught in the past and tweak it and then record a Loom tutorial um, to schedule that for the, the lesson. Um, so out of these four, I only need to prep two um, in terms of like fully prepping the lesson. The other two are just reusing previous assignments. So just making some tweaks to uh, that educate quiz for my year 11s uh, who are foundation set. So what I'm doing is I'm just going through the quiz and removing any questions that have three dots because those are the harder questions. And then what this um, will do is it will tell me how many questions in total. Okay, so here's an example of a resource that I'm going to be tweaking. Uh, so this is currently saved on the drive and what I need to do in order to use Pear Deck on this is to make a copy as a Google slide because it's currently as a PowerPoint. So I just need to go to save as Google Slides, save that to my drive, and then I will edit it from there. So that should open now as a separate tab. And what I'm going to need to make sure I do is that I make a copy onto my personal drive. So I'll do the entire presentation and I will save that to my personal drive. Okay, so here is the copy. I will just now rename this so that it has the title that I want. And then I will use a Pear Deck. So I'll go to Add-ons and then Pear Deck and then open that. And I will um, use the interactive functions that pop up on the side um, to tweak this PowerPoint and make it interactive for students to engage with. Okay, I just want to quickly show you that this lesson is too long for a, a remote learning lesson. So I am going to choose to uh, focus on this one in our next lesson um, and actually just get students to do a little bit of pre-learning on how to control blood glucose. So um, they start off with this little task here. They're going to respond um, using the text box and then they're going to check their answers and then we're going to go through the key information. So this is the part that I will record in the Loom tutorial just explaining these key concepts um, and the negative feedback loop um, as well. And then their main task is to uh, sketch this graph and to write descriptions for the these specific points in the graph, making reference to um, the key concepts that I've explained above. Um, so this lesson actually keeps going. Uh, it talks about diabetes and then it has lots of practice questions. So because I have a live with this class on Wednesday and they are doing this tomorrow, I will use these practice questions and that section on, on diabetes uh, to, to go through that in the live lesson. So I'm literally just deleting all of these little pages um, to do that in that lesson. So I will probably now just find a quick quiz or practice question about negative feedback loop so then they can finish off the lesson and then that way they would have done two tasks, learned some of the theory as pre-learning ready for our live lesson. I just thought I'd show you Pear Deck if you've never used it. So once you share the link 
um, with your students of the interactive presentation for Pear Deck. This is what they will look like. So students just say how they are feeling and then they will be able to start uh, the presentation and interact with it, depending on what functions you've given it, given them to interact. Now I've placed lots of text boxes, so then they are able to answer the questions and whatever they type in this answer text box, I will then be able to read that in my teacher dashboard. So they'll just pop up with their name and the answer that they've written. And that's just a really great way of seeing how they found that activity, but also who's engaged and what misconceptions or things they still find really tricky. Uh, so yeah, so then they just play next and then they just work through the interactive PowerPoint, writing their answers when they need to. And in this case, that Loom tutorial is just going through all of, um, you know, all of um, the information I've explained in the PowerPoint. Okay, so here's a lesson that I just prepared. I am going to review selective breeding and genetic engineering with them. They have asked for this in the past, so I thought we would do some extended writing exam style questions. I'm just going to get them to write in their answer, see what they remember while they're waiting for everyone else to join. Then I'll do a little bit of teacher led, just quickly recap how selective breeding happens, discuss a few of those problems. And then I've chosen these three exam questions and I've given them the function to draw on the slide so they can type in their answer. That should take about 10 minutes to answer. And then we will quickly recap genetic engineering. So I will read this section and, you know, try to explain this um, to help them remember it. And then we will answer these exam questions um, next. So three more exam questions, another 10 minutes. So that in total is a half an hour to 40 minute lesson, including some feedback, um, which is perfect. So there we go. That took 15 minutes to prep. So I've had lunch. It is now half two and I'm just about to go live with my year 12 class. And I thought I would just quickly show you what I've got planned for them today. So we're going to do a pair deck lesson and I'm going to go through some feedback of a task I set them to do last week, which was to write a methodology for um, a practical to look at measuring the rate of enzyme activity. So I've just screenshotted a few um, pieces of work and I'm going to get them to reflect on how they would improve this, uh, to write an aim for this methodology then to uh, write down what the variables would be for this aim and then also to reflect on whether we should in include how to calculate the rate of reaction and then we're going to move on after I've given them some feedback we're going to move on to doing some practice questions in which they will be able to draw on the slide so I'll be able to see what they're answering and hopefully I can show you that as well. Okay just wanted to quickly show you how my live lesson with year 12 went I had lots of questions here, obviously for them to, to tackle on their own and they can draw so they can type in their answers. And as they're doing it, I'm just reviewing it. I'm not gonna show you any more because it has their names and obviously I want to keep that, um, you know, private. But I can um, see who's working on each slide and I can give them feedback by reading through their answers. But what I actually did was I then shared my screen with them of Google Jamboard and I copy pasted the exam question that they were finding tricky. And we went through, I think it was two or three questions that most people were getting wrong. So I just went through that with them and um, we looked at it and we analyzed the questions um, just so that they could see how, you know, what the thought process behind the question is. So I didn't plan any of this Jamboard uh, bit. I actually just opened Jamboard on a whim, copy pasted it during the lesson as they were tackling those questions and then shared my screen, got everyone on to Jamboard and then we discussed the questions and I, um, and I went through each one. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a really great way of giving them immediate feedback and making that lesson really, really purposeful for them. And the feedback was great. They really loved it. So there's an idea. Okay, guys, so it's about half three. I had um, a quick meeting, a quick science meeting with the team. 
um, just to review our assessments and the marking and the workload, etc. Uh, but I wanted to quickly update you on how my to-do list is looking and also um, what I still have to do um, now that it's mid-afternoon. So I'm just going to twist you over and let's have a look at my list. So here's the to-do list from this morning. I got everything done um, and now all that is left is to do my marking. So I wanted to let you know how long each task took me to do because I always get questions on that. The first two, which were admin based tasks, that took me about an hour with the interruptions that I had from Google Classroom private comments and answering student queries. And then I had my live lesson after that. And then after the live lesson, I prepped Tuesday's lessons, which took me in total about an hour and a half. So that was those four lessons there. And then I broke for lunch and after lunch I responded to some emails and did a bit of admin and also tweaked my year 12 lesson so that I could have a little bit of feedback in that lesson. I delivered that um, year 12 lesson and then I had a quick meeting, a quick science team meeting after that live lesson and it is now 3.30 so I'm going to take a little bit of a break and then come back to doing a little bit of marking. So I'm going to go for a walk and listen to my audiobook just to get a little bit of fresh air and come away from the screen and from the desk and see something a little bit different. It is really, really grey outside. I should hopefully show you a little bit of footage um, and then I'll come back to my desk and mark for about an hour, I think, before the end of the day. So I just came back from a walk. It was really nice and refreshing to be outside. Uh, it was a nice quick one. So it's just gone four. I made a quick hot drink to keep me company. <laughs> As always, I think it's just so nice to have one, especially in the winter. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna spend about an hour now doing some marking. I don't think there's much point explaining that today. I've got more marking to do tomorrow. So I'll share with, uh, with you all of, you know, the marking stuff tomorrow and how I mark questions and how I give the feedback, etc. Uh, but I hope that you found it useful today to see how I tackle admin stuff and how I tackle some lesson planning and manage my time and what it's like to, you know, be teaching a combination of lessons that are live and not live. Um, and I wanted to let you know that on Sunday I'm going to be filming a Q&A video uh, answering questions uh, from you guys. So if you want to leave a question in the comment section down below uh, that you'd like me to answer, whether that is, uh, you know, related to the vlogs or whether that is just something that you're keen, you know, you're quite keen to know um, about teaching advice or myself, just feel free to pop them uh, in the comment section and I will try my best to answer all of them. Um, but that is it for today's video, guys. I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Um, and I will share with you guys my list for Tuesday because I'll probably either write it tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, and then I will share with you a few more behind the scenes. If there are any special requests of stuff you want to see in the vlogs, let me know and I'll try to include it as well. But that's it, guys. Have a lovely evening and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.